Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about one of the most important application known as high pressure processing. High hydrostatic pressure processing, a relatively new technology to the food industry which helps in inactivating microorganisms without causing any significant flavor or nutritional changes of food. So before going into the topic, there is one major thing we have to know. So then only it will be easy for us to understand it. Why do we need high pressure processing? Any idea? Can you guess anything? Okay. So there is a quote which states that uh, good food is the foundation of genuine happiness. The quality of uh, food as well as the safety of food products are the two factors that is uh, how do you like it is one of the most important thing which influences the choice made by today's increasing demanding uh, consumers conventional food sterilization as well as preservation method often results in number of undesired changes in the food such as like uh, loss of smell color flavor texture as well as nutritional value in short a reduction in the apparent freshness and quality of final product. High pressure processing is non-thermal food preservation technique which inactivates harmful pathogens and vegetative uh, spoilage microorganisms by using pressure as major source. So high pressure processing is a cold pasteurization technique or technology by which a product already sealed in, uh, in its final package and then introduced into a vessel by subjected to high level of isostatic pressure. So this process is also known as hydro, uh, high hydrostatic pressure processing, um, the ultra high pressure processing. So intensive pressure about 400 to 600 megapascal is used in HPP for most foods to be preserved with minimal effects on change texture appearance and nutritional value high pressure uh, processing or pressure treatment can also be used to the process both in liquid as well as high moisture content solids of a food so i think you people got an idea on what i'm talking about and uh, let's get much deeper into the title by starting it with a history so the conservation of food it has been one of the most uh, important concern of uh, people for over thousands of years and uh, humans have been developing countless methods to, uh, to preserve their foods uh, and uh, to produce a product which is germless or bacteria-less. So methods such as curing smoking were uh, supposed to be an early technique to extend the shelf life but also it came with uh, side effects such as like contamination and uh, it is something which occurs all frequently this particular thing changed in the year 1899 when Bert Holmes Hyde a researcher from University of West Virginia located in USA has demonstrated the inactivation of microorganism using high hydrostatic pressure for the first time so this was the first uh, documented on pressure being used as a food preservation method and intensive research the non uh, been happening on HPP followed by uh, which also lead in uh, new designs and manufacturing and then it comes to the first commercial unit in the year 1990s it started with a fruit jam in Japan and soon after HPP orange juice was offered in French supermarket from then on a uh, number of uh, HPP application has also steadily been increased from preservation structural alternation of a food and also production of added value foods so now talking about basic principles there are two general scientific principles of direct relevance to the use of high pressure processing in uh, food the first one is lee chatley principle which applies to all physical processes uh, and states that when a system at an equilibrium is distributed the system responds in a way that tend to minimize the disturbance so this means that high pressure stimulates reaction that results in a decrease in volume but opposes reaction that involve an increase in volume 
So any phenomenon, for example, like phase transition or uh, change in molecular configuration or chemical reaction. So whatever it is, any phenomenon that is accompanied by a decrease in volume will be enhanced by the pressure. And, and the second principle is isostatic rule. So isostatic rule states that the pressure is instantaneously and uniformly transmitted throughout a sample under pressure, whether the sample is in a direct contact. Pressure is also transmitted in a uniform and quasi instantaneous manner throughout the sample. The time necessary for pressure processing is therefore independent of sample size in contrast to the thermal processing. So now let us talk about the components of HPP system. Although the principle of high pressure processing of microbial inactivation have been known since the late uh, 1800s, it is only relatively recent development in mechanical engineering that have permitted larger high pressure vessel to be constructed at a reasonable cost with a sufficient durability to withstand thousands of pressure cycles without failure. High pressure processing system were initially developed in the chemical and uh, material process industry for applications such as uh, making artificial diamonds and uh, sintered materials from powder. It is only during the past two decades that food industry has begun using pressure treatment for food preservation. The first one is pressure vessel. Close closure for sealed vessels, a device uh, for holding the closure, high pressure intensifier pump uh, system for controlling and monitoring the pressure temperature uh, products handling system for transferring product to uh, and uh, from the uh, pressure vessel uh, system for filter and reusing the compressed uh, fluid so these are different uh, components in hpp system so let us talk about the cycles in hpp treatment so first get ready with the untreated packed product the packet product will uh, liquid or solid so it depends on what kind of product you are keeping you can be uh, like you can able to see in the middle there uh, there is a high pressure uh, vessel and uh, heating cooling system in there so now we have to load the untreated pa uh, packed uh, product inside the vessel now the vessel uh, to be filled with pressure transmitting medium mostly the medium will be water so this is the place where the water is is it is a medium there okay then uh, pressurization occurs so after that it releases of pressure and uh, we got the treated product outside so next hpp equipment in this there is three way of hpp processing treatment so one is batch process Another one is semi-continuous process and third one is continuous process. In the first one, the batch process. So in this process, both liquid and solid products are processed. So but these have to be pre-packed. Food products are packed in a high barrier, flexible pouch or plastic container. The packages are loaded into the high pressure chamber by using a perforated basket. The vessel is sealed and is filled with a pressure transmitting fluid. Normally they go for water. So pressurized by the use of high pressure pump, which injects additional quantities of fluid to obtain the targeted pressure. The product is held at a desired pressure for about uh, 3 to 10 minutes. After holding the product for a desired time of target pressure, the vessel is decompressed by releasing the pressure transmitting fluid now the product can be unloaded so this is how a batch process is being done and talking about semi-continuous process so liquid foods such as juice are processed in the semi-continuous system without any packaging requirements these semi-continuous high pressure equipments use two or more pressure vessels each containing a free floating piston that also allows each vessel is to be divided into two different chambers. Pressure here is applied to the transmitting fluid which results in compression of liquid food in the other chamber. The liquid food is then pumped into the first chamber and then they fill the valve within 
they close and the pressure is transmitted through the fluid the second chamber of vessel on the opposite side of the floating piston after an appropriate process hold time the product discharge valve in open and low pressure pumps injects pressure transmitting fluid into the second chamber so which also pushes on the piston and expels the content of the product chamber through the discharge valve now talking about third one continuous process so as the name defines it is a continuous process the high pressure processing requires continuous batch operation uh, with multiple vessels in parallel the figure shows how to carry out the batch process or operation in this system three different high pressure valves are arranged in a parallel uh, for one set of intensifier and uh, continuously processed by staggering the processing steps of each vessel these are different commercial products which are available in the market so you can see uh, you would have seen such kind of packaged product so now let us see the applications of high pressure processing the application of high pressure processing in fruit and vegetable are listed in the table the pressure holding uh, time will differ for various products then the application of uh, dairy is listed in uh, different types of milks so research into the application uh, of high pressure processing for milk preservation began long back uh, when it was demonstrated that pressure treatment can extend the shelf life of milk it was also investigated such treatment as an alternative method for milk pasteurization Several research have been done on the application of uh, HPP on milk and milk based products. Do you think HPP be used for any kind of processing of food? like any other processing method? HPP cannot be universally applied for processing all types of high moisture content foods. The treatment can be used for both liquid and solid products. At the moment, HPP is being used in the United States, Europe, uh, South America, as well as Asia uh, for a variety of uh, high-value foods either to extend the shelf life or to improve the food safety. Some products that are being commercially produced using HPP are cooked ready-to-eat meats, uh, salads, avocado products like glocamole, uh, tomato salsa, apple sauce variety of juice and uh, seafoods what type of products high pressure processing cannot be used so this is a general question high pressure treatment requires the food must uh, contain water and not have an internal air pocket food material containing entrapped air such as like strawberries or marshmallows leafy vegetables would be crushed under high pressure processing treatment similarly the pressure treatment may not work very well for the dry solid as well or like powder. Pressure treatment may compact the product that do not have a sufficient moisture. So further due to the reduced water activity, pressure treatment may also be ineffective on such product for microbial destruction. So I hope you people got a basic idea on what a HPP is. Thank you.